The Ordinary's 100% L-ascorbic acid powder. You may have heard of this inexpensive vitamin C product from The Ordinary, but do you know what L-ascorbic acid actually is? And do you know what to mix this powder with to get the maximum benefits for your skin? Today we're going to talk about the science, the chemistry of ascorbic acid, and why it's actually different than vitamin C, what you should know before putting it on your face, and of course, how to use this. L-ascorbic acid is often called the most potent form of vitamin C, but ascorbic acid and vitamin C aren't actually the same thing. Vitamin C is more of a complex, whereas ascorbic acid is one piece. There's also two different types of ascorbic acid. There's L-ascorbic acid and D-ascorbic acid, but L-ascorbic acid is the one we care about most for our skincare and for our bodies. You probably know that vitamin C is important. It's found in oranges, lemons, other citrus fruits, and different vegetables. It's very important for us to consume because it's used in so many processes in our bodies, and a lack of it actually causes a disease called scurvy. But outside of consuming it in our diet, using vitamin C on our skin has some amazing benefits. Here's the thing, there are a lot of products out there that will sell you their expensive vitamin C, but because it's such a finicky guy, it degrades pretty quickly. So sometimes you're paying a lot of money for a product that isn't giving you the full potency. What's great about this product is that it is 100% pure L-ascorbic acid, so you're in control. But that also means that you're responsible. And unfortunately, because this is so powerful, some people have had negative reactions, which is why you need to know the science behind how it works, how you can use it, and what to do if things do go wrong. The main benefits here come from the antioxidant properties. Vitamin C is often sold as something that will brighten or glow up the skin, and it's very true. It's great at brightening the skin and working against dark spots, specifically those caused by sun exposure, UV exposure, and reactive oxygen species. The reason that sun exposure can be damaging to skin is because of those reactive oxygen oxygen species. And L-ascorbic acid or vitamin C actually protects the skin by neutralizing those reactive oxygen species, those nasty little guys that want to destroy your skin. Not only is it great for working on some of that sun damage and those dark spots, but it's also great if you want to boost up collagen. You see, in the body, vitamin C is needed to produce collagen, but does it work the same on the outside of the skin? That's not totally definitive, but there are some studies showing that vitamin C, when applied topically, can boost up collagen synthesis, meaning keeping the integrity of your skin stronger and hopefully protecting or promoting it to create more of the strong stretchy stuff. Here's the biggest problem with vitamin C. It oxidizes, meaning if it comes into contact with sunlight, it can start to degrade, meaning if it touches air, it's going to be less effective for your skin. Even in some water-based formulas, which it is soluble in, it starts to break down. And that's why if you buy a really expensive vitamin C product from the store and let it sit in your warm, moist bathroom or on the shelf in the sun for six months, the vitamin C in there may have completely degraded and you're getting no benefit to your skin. This is fantastic because this L-ascorbic acid is a fresh fresh, powerful dose. You mix it right in your hand at the time you're ready to use it, so it is the most potent. However, often with potency comes pain, specifically talking about sensitivity to the skin or a negative reaction if this is used improperly. The other thing is that vitamin C generally is safe to use during the daytime. There are studies that show that if you use it in combination with sunscreen, it can actually protect your skin just the slightest bit more. However, because this is 100% and it can cause a little bit of irritation to the skin, I personally recommend using this only at night. Now what should you be mixing this with? Remember that ascorbic acid is a fractionated crystalline isolate of vitamin C. Essentially it's soluble in water, but unfortunately leaving it in water too long can cause it to degrade. Because you're mixing it right here right now, you can use it with water-based products. The Ordinary has also put out statements directly recommending that you mix it with water-based solutions, but there are a couple oils that you can get away with and a couple of anhydrous or not water solutions that you can also mix this in with. The Ordinary provides this little measuring scoop that you use to go in and take out the right amount of vitamin C. I personally recommend only using about half because again, this stuff is really potent. As a general rule of thumb, mixing this powder in with oils is going to be a little bit more gentle on the skin and mixing it with water is going to make it a little bit more stingy. But keep in mind that L-ascorbic acid is water soluble. So just the way sugar dissolves in water, this is going to dissolve in it. If you mix this in with oil, it might stay a little bit chunky or a little bit gritty. If you're going to use oils, 
else, I would recommend something like vitamin E. Vitamin E has been shown to stabilize vitamin C and it's also very beneficial for the skin. In our bodies, vitamin C and vitamin E react to actually rejuvenate each other in different biological processes and on the skin it can also provide a benefit. One of my favorite oils to use that is from the ordinary is something like the B5. B5 is also a water soluble vitamin that is very beneficial to the skin, especially when it comes to soothing and a little bit of anti-inflammation. Uh, B5 is also really good for acne prone skin. The Marine Hyaluronics is another one that I really like to mix this in with, but one of my favorites is the Resveratrol and Ferulic Acid. You may have heard of vitamin C and Ferulic Acid in a lot of other products, such as ones from Drunk Elephant or from SkinCeuticals, and that's because Ferulic Acid and vitamin E can directly benefit this vitamin C or L ascorbic acid. This Resveratrol Ferulic Acid blend also gives some of those benefits, but it also has Resveratrol, which you may know from grapes or from wine. This is an amazing antioxidant, and these formulas actually work really well together. They blend in really nice, they really treat my skin kindly, and The Ordinary has directly recommended using these two together. There are some moisturizers that are not from The Ordinary that are water-based that I really like mixing these in with. They go onto the skin nicely, but remember, even though vitamin C is soluble in water or water-based products, it can sting a lot more. And because water degrades vitamin C or L-ascorbic acid over time, you shouldn't be saving this formula. Mix just what you need, put it on your skin, and use it. You see, vitamin C or L-ascorbic acid works best at a low pH. If we go back to that pH scale, it stands for potential hydrogen, it shows us how well well it's going to get into the skin. You see, our skin is built to protect us. This outer layer at the very top is made to keep things out and keep us in. Our skin helps our body regulate temperature, it carries the nerves so that we can touch and feel, and it's our body's largest organ, mainly used for protection and waterproofing us so that we don't fall apart in the shower. You see, the stratum corneum is this very top layer of skin that connects us to the outer world, and it's a very fatty layer, which means it's hard for products to get inside of it. In order to get a product through the skin, it's actually quite difficult. We want our products to go through the epidermis or maybe even into the dermis down here where it can do work. But naturally, our skin trying to protect us wants to keep those things out because it doesn't know that we're giving it something beneficial. Because the skin has oil in it and because most vitamin C is water soluble and again a charged particle, it's going to have a really hard time getting in there. But again, that's why lowering the pH, that potential hydrogen, helps this get in deeper. You can kind of think of a lower pH as carving a pathway for the vitamin C and this product to get where it needs to go. A pH below 3.5 is generally best, but remember, that's also very acidic. So it can sting or it can be irritating, especially if you have sensitive skin. So low pH products are fantastic to get this product deep in there, which is why mixing this with something water soluble is a very potent idea. But please Please keep in mind that you should always patch test this first just to make sure that you don't have a negative reaction. Patch testing should always be done as a safety precaution at least 24 to 48 hours before and if you want to know how to patch test and where you should do it because you shouldn't patch test directly on your face, you can watch a video that we've done on that right here. Now there are a few products that you should not mix with L-ascorbic acid or vitamin C. One in particular that The Ordinary says is a contradiction is the EUK-134. There's also niacinamide. Now most of your vitamin C products that you find at the store aren't going to have negative reactions to B vitamins or to niacinamide. However, this is 100% L-ascorbic acid. This is really, really potent. And The Ordinary's niacinamide and zinc is also very potent, so these should not be mixed together. The Ordinary says this directly, but I would would even go as far as to say don't mix this with any niacinamide based product just to keep yourself safe. You also shouldn't mix this with benzoyl peroxide. If you're struggling with acne then you know what that is. We've done a full video on how benzoyl peroxide actually works, how a bond inside of it breaks in order to kill bacteria and kill acne. But because of the way that benzoyl peroxide works, vitamin C doesn't get along well with it. So this is something that you shouldn't use or mix with any product that has benzoyl peroxide in it. Just use them at different times a day. Do you remember to use this on unbroken skin. Even though vitamin C is used in wound healing, The Ordinary states that this should not be used on broken skin, and you don't want to cause granulomas in the skin. I've seen some horrible videos online of people microneedling their face and then putting vitamin C on it. 
don't do that. It can cause irritation to the skin, it can cause these little granulomas, these little bumps underneath the skin to form, and they can be even harder to get out. So don't use vitamin C after any microneedling procedures or chemical peels. If you do put this on the skin and it starts to sting or burn, you can always use an acid neutralizer or something like a baking soda paste in order to counteract this. Remember, it's that low pH that is causing it to both penetrate into the skin and to sting a little bit. So if you bring the pH up higher, either to a neutral or an alkaline position, you can kind of reverse that stinging from happening. Because remember back from chemistry, acids and bases cancel each other out. The positives and benefits are numerous from the fact that this is inexpensive, the fact that you actually get a lot of this. This is a ton of vitamin C and I don't think anyone would actually use this completely before it goes bad. The Ordinary says that it's good for around six months after you open it and it is in this light sealed container. And again, it is so potent. You can mix it in with so many different things. It does allow you to experiment like a skincare scientist in your bathroom. But again, with that opportunity comes great responsibility. And some of the cons are the fact that it can burn the skin Skin, that if you use it improperly or irresponsibly, that it can cause issues, such as microneedling plus this could equal granulomas. The other con that I have with this is that it is not quick and it is a mess. Because it's a powder, it can literally puff up into the air or it can be hard to mix in your hand. And again, it's a time consuming process. It's not just squeezing something out of a bottle and putting it on your skin. It's actually taking this out, putting it in your hand, mixing it with another ingredient, making sure that it's evenly dispersed or dissolved, and then applying it to your skin and being careful about what other products you're using before and after it. Overall, it is something that I highly recommend, but I hope that you always do your homework with. If you learned a little something from this video, make sure that you that like button and that subscribe button if you haven't already. More videos on The Ordinary and skin science can be found right here. And I cannot wait to see you and your beautiful skin in the next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.